Greetings friends, it's me Wayman, and this is another video, Judges for Dummies, and this is going to be entitled Gideon the Warlord, and Chapter 8 is a totally different take on Gideon than uh, Chapters 7 and 6. Here, um, maybe it's a little uh, bit more honest uh, view of Gideon, and here we have military tactics that, that maybe really happened and something that survived that shows uh, the true side of Gideon or maybe uh, the writer has skewed even this piece maybe a different writer um, on what he wants to say about the uh, tribal setup and the idea of uh, military commanders on how they worked and military tactics because here Gideon um, is kind of tarnished in chapter 8. And let's read about what happens. Um, so here he has some disputes in chapter 8-1 uh, to 8-3 uh, with um, Ephraim because they were like, hey, why didn't you tell us you were chasing um, the... Uh, and, and why didn't you tell us you had a fight with Midian? And um, uh, Gideon says, hey, relax, you know, um, the princess of Midian, Orb and Zeb, uh, uh, fell into your hands. You got them. Um, uh, what am I compared to that? And uh, their anger subsided. So, so here, uh, maybe they wanted to get in on the spoil. But here, uh, Gideon and uh, 300 of his men, uh, they're tired out, and they're crossing over to Jordan. And they come to Sukkoth, and they say, uh, give us some food. We're starving. And basically the city tells them to get lost. And uh, also um, they went up to Peniel and uh, they said the same thing. Basically th the city told them to get lost. So so here um, Gideon gets really upset and he's like, hey, once I catch the uh, sovereigns sovereigns of uh, uh, Midian, uh, Zeba, and Tsamuna, uh, I'm going to come back and look for you guys. And that's exactly what he does. So what's interesting is that here uh, nobody knows what's going on. They're acting in their own interests and now we'll get to the part where Gideon does so also or he's portrayed to do that. Um, so after the, the huge um, military uh, uh, battle. Um, the men of Israel says to Gideon, uh, rule over us, both you and your sons, also your son's son, for you have saved us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I do not rule over you, nor does my son rule over you. Adonai uh, does rule over you. So here, uh, the writer, is he doing it to um, make Gideon seem pious? Well, maybe not. Uh, the writer could be uh, uh, portraying Gideon as saying, look, uh, I just want the spoil, uh, and I don't want the responsibility of being a ruler. And so, right in the next sentence, next verse, 824, Judges, uh, he gets into that. Um, and Gideon said to them, I have a request to make of you, that each of you give me the ring from his spoil, for they had rings of gold, because they were Ishmaelites. And they said, sure, we'll, we'll give them to you. And uh, they hand him over, and he makes an ephod. And then um, Israel, uh, you know, starts worshiping it. And the text says they go whoring after it. And it became a snare uh, to Gideon and his house. So, uh, thus Midian was humbled before the children of Israel, and they lifted up their heads no more. And the land was at rest for 40 years uh, in the days of Gideon. So here, uh, at the end, uh, the people, once Gideon is dead, uh, go back to Baal worship. So, so what's interesting is the whole cycle of Gideon, uh, he, he's called out of Baal worship, his father worshiped Baal, but then they went back into it. Um, and here he's portrayed as a warlord. He doesn't want responsibility, it seems. He just is interested in the, uh, the booty of war, and they divide it up. He gets his half. He goes on his merry way. He doesn't take ownership. He doesn't take leadership. Uh, 
maybe this is how the writer wants to portray this time period, uh, because in this text of Judges, we're constantly reminded that um, everybody did as they pleased and there was no king in Israel. So uh, later, um, once we get into uh, the text, we'll see how some things try to transpire where Abimelech tries to unite the tribe. Almost does it, but fails. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, take care, friends. Remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.